Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about what I have planned to read for November. Let's get started. First things first, I was planning on going for like a red kind of look and instead we've landed in like burgundy but honestly i'm like not angry at it like i'm not mad like she looks demonic and we love that in case you can't tell i'm dressed up today as satan the horns duh i am hoping and fucking praying that i can read more in November than what I have been because my reading as you may know because I keep talking about it has been so shit that it's literally amazing to me. God, I'm baffled. How are you so productive in your unproductivity? And that kind of actually leads me into what I want to talk to you about today just like really quick just super quickly let's just go over a few things okay? I want to tell you and I've been meaning to say this for like for like ever I just I I just keep like you know me i just forget <laughs> but i just needed you to know that you need to give yourself a fucking break that you need to take a break and i know you're gonna be like no i have like 16 projects and you know 14 assignments and i have kids and a family and a husband or friends and i have they i have work you know i need you to know that it's okay to be unproductive you do not need to have every single fucking moment of your day scheduled and whoever created this like idea whoever perpetuates it can literally suck a dick being in university and having this channel and just knowing that i love to read and being unmotivated to read because of university because of other stressors in my life is absolutely horrible as much as there is like an expectation perhaps the biggest thing is that you take care of yourself you deserve to be calm you deserve to live a stress-free life you're allowed to take care of yourself you deserve to take care of yourself okay being productive is really good because it helps to distract you from the mundanity of life but at the same time also being overproductive trying to be overproductive adds too much expectation you're expecting too much from yourself and you need to give yourself a break you need to take a break you need to have a nap scroll on your phone for 30 minutes read a book go for a walk talk to your dog or something remind yourself that you are worthy of comfort and that you are worthy of peace do not put others productivity others happiness others meanings in front of your own okay okay i just thought that you should know that i just it's been on my mind you know and i just anyway okay let's get on with the video let's move on let's talk about fucking books or whatever now you may be thinking and i doubt you are but you might be thinking okay jordan line you haven't been reading a lot so i'm sure that your tbr is like very very small very realistic i bet that's like exactly what you're doing and i would say to that no no my tbr is overstuffed just like me bitch let's begin by talking about what the patrons and i are going to be reading for our monthly book club if you're interested in joining the patreon of course there's always a link in the description you can always click it and check it out and see what uh, appeals to you if there isn't and you don't want to then don't right now the poll on the patreon is deciding between three books the first one being come with me by ronald malfi summer suns by lee mandelo and cackle by rachel harrison now i've spoken about summer suns quite recently and i've also spoken about cackle by rachel harrison quite recently so i'm not going to delve too deeply into these basically they're new releases i'm very interested in reading them this one has witches which we love we live for that and this one is about like a queer ghost story 
it says that it's a sweltering queer southern gothic and that's kind of really all i ever want so i wouldn't be angry at either of these winning and then come with me by ronald malfi i haven't spoken about this i think in a while but this is also kind of a new release tells a story of this dude who's like married to this woman like they are perfect for each other this dude is living in his like personal heaven okay this woman and him are married they're man and wife they're best friends and then she fucking dies she literally dies and he is bereft he doesn't know what the fuck to do with himself he is unable to cope with his life it's gone from heaven to hell like it's awful and then he finds something a little bit suspicious he finds a receipt it's a receipt for a motel outside of the city a motel that he has literally never been to so he instantly is like super suspicious he's like the fuck was this bitch doing in this motel without me what would she ever need in a motel without me and so he instantly is like the fuck is going on so he starts to do a little bit of digging he does a little bit of like detective work he's like a little sherlock a little sleuth moment and he finds out that she's been living this fucking double fucking life and the deeper he goes, the more he realizes that his wife was somebody that he literally did not fucking know. This book came out in July. I bought it then and I have been looking forward to reading it ever since buying it. I love a good story of secret identity, blah, blah, blah. First of all, let's talk about Blood Cruise by Matt Strandberg. On the back cover, it says, on the Baltic Sea, no one can hear you scream. And if that's not true, I don't know what is. <laughs> I've been really, really excited to read this for months, okay? Ever since buying it. And it wasn't until recently that my interest really peaked at a new high. I was talking to my patrons on patreon.com slash Reads. <laughs> we came across the discussion of this book. Someone said, I believe it was Judy, that it was about vampires on a cruise ship. Now, let me tell you something, bitch, okay? Let me tell you something. When Judy, I'm pretty sure it was Judy. If it wasn't Judy, I'm so sorry. Like when Judy said that, I literally got so excited. I was like, I'm sorry, wait a minute. Wait, wait, hold, hold the fucking, hold the fucking phone. Hold the phone, okay? Hold it, just hold the phone. I thought it was about a serial killer on a cruise ship. I thought it was just a slasher on a cruise ship. And then Judy, wonderful, beautiful Judy, tells me, tells us that not only is it a vampire on a cruise ship, but it's a child vampire. So it's a creepy kid who's a vampire on a cruise ship that starts killing everyone. Hello? Yeah, I wanna go home. I'm, I'm literally about to die. So the moment she said that, I was like, fuck man. <laughs> now I have to, now I have to read that book immediately. So I'm really, really, really excited to read this. I cannot wait. It has everything you could ever want, plus more. You know, it's got great reviews. It's got a great plot, seems to be well-written seems to be translated well like what's not to love i need to read this this month if i don't read this this month literally slap me in the face and ask me what the fuck i'm doing wrong in my life because apparently it's everything next let's talk about a book that i started this month and i know i'm not gonna be able to finish it so that is the last house on needless street by katriana ward i love this edition okay, and this is my problem every single time i go to the bookstore which is pretty often, probably like once a week, because <laughs> I have a fucking problem, but I'm fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. I go to the bookstore and I see the paperback version, like the other US Canada version of this book. And I literally almost fucking buy it every fucking time. Tell me what the fuck is wrong with me, bitch. I literally haven't read it. I don't know if I like it. And yet I go to the store and I fucking see it. And I think, well, how nice would that look? <laughs> I have a problem. Like I literally had, I literally had the cover. I literally had that cover twice. They sent me two arcs of that edition. I gave them away because I knew that I had this copy. So why bitch, tell me why the fuck I go to the store and I, and I have the urge to buy it. Like, 
I think I'm just unwell. I think I'm literally unwell. <laughs> the last house on Needless Street. I don't know what this is about. I am listening to the audiobook. I think I'm only about like three or four chapters in. So I don't really understand what the fuck is going on. So far in the book, we've met one character who I can't tell if he's mentally ill. I can't tell if he's like a grown man who kind of has like the mental age of like a young child. Um, I don't know if he's evil. Like, I don't like, I don't know. I literally don't fucking know. But so far there have been three characters, this main dude, his cat, Olivia, and then his daughter. I don't know if it's actually his daughter though. And I don't know if this is literally like a spoiler because it's only been a few chapters. Like I haven't gotten very far in the book at all. But I do want to finish it in November because I have heard good things. People tell me good things about it. I think I do remember hearing people talk about how confusing it is at the beginning of the book and how the further you go, the more it makes sense. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I can't wait to continue on with this. Uh, so far it's really good, but what the fuck do I know? The next book I have, the next book I want to read is one that I've had for a while. I haven't even started to read. I haven't even thought about picking it up. Like that's, that's kind of what fucks me up. And I'm sorry about all these tangents, but like, it's kind of what fucks me up is that like, I buy all these books and they just sit on my shelves and don't, and I don't even fucking think about reading them, bitch. Like, please tell me that I'm not alone in this. Please tell me that somebody else out there literally just like comes home with like book hauls, puts them on their fucking shelf and then doesn't even think about them for six months to a year. I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I am. Am I the villain? I don't think I'm the villain. Please tell me I'm not the only one, please. But that's what happened with this book. I haven't even thought about it. I don't think I've even added it to any of my TBRs because I don't think I've had any interest in reading it, which really fucks me up. I'm talking about Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Tell me why I've owned this book for so long and never, and never thought about reading it. But from what I've heard, it's like the best Riley Sager. I kind of have like low um, expectations for Mr. Sagir. Sagir. I don't expect much from him because I think he's literally mediocre. Like, fight me, I don't care. He's literally kind of mediocre, like let's be honest. But people say, people have told me that this is his best book. And it seems to be a haunted house story. I'm not sure. That's the thing as well. I've owned it for a long ass time. I don't really know what it's about. This is about Maggie Holt. Maggie and her family, when she was very young, move into this like mansion kind of house. Okay, they move into this place. And then 20 days later, they flee. Her and her family fucking run the fuck out of this fucking house to get away from it. They're like, no, we, we can't stay here. So they leave. And then the father, Maggie's father, writes this tell-all book called The House of Horrors. Now, let's go into the future. 25 years later, Maggie's father, dead, died gone. He is donezo. So Maggie inherits this mansion. She's like, you know what? I want to get the fuck away from this because it has haunted me as much as those ghosts apparently in the book haunted us. I'm so done with being associated with this place. So she's like, I'm going to move in. I'm going to renovate it. And then I'm, then I'm going to fucking sell it because I don't want anything to do with it. But the locals don't appreciate her presence. They don't appreciate what the book did to their little community. Not only that, but Maggie within this house begins to experience what it was that her father detailed in the book. And so she's like, was this motherfucker telling the truth? What the fuck? I love a good haunted house story. You know that, you know. So I'm really excited and I hope this doesn't let me down. Please, Mr. Sager, don't be a mediocre dude okay don't be mediocre just don't let's also very quickly discuss a little book called stolen tongues by felix blackwell i spoke about this quite recently as well i think actually in my last video literally everyone loves this fucking book but if you missed it basically this is about a couple in like a cabin they're like secluded it's like an anniversary or something and they're about to fucking fuck dude they're about to get it on and then a bunch of stuff like starts making sounds in the woods and they hear like crying and screaming and then they start seeing this fucking thing trail up to their house and they're literally like no what the fuck is going on but then the husband sees that his wife is whispering to the creature that's trying to get them what? 
like I said, so many people fucking love this. And I really, I really want to love it too. And apparently the prologue is super, super, super scary. Super scary. If it's not super scary, I'm going to judge all of you who told me it was. Uh, if you've read this, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know your thoughts. <laughs> Next up, let's talk about a book that I bought when it first came out and I haven't thought about it since. Thankfully, it's not been as long as it's been with uh, Home Before Dark, but I'm pretty sure I'm the last one. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that like the moment it came out, everyone got really excited and read it. And I was excited too, and I wanted to read it, but then I didn't um, because you know, depression. <laughs> I am looking forward to reading it and I'm hoping I can get to it in November. Maybe my TBR is a bit crazy. Don't hold your breath by the way on like any of this. It's all nonsense. None of it actually means anything. And I don't think I'm gonna read all of these books, probably not even half of them. Anyway, I'm talking about The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. He just announced his next book, which is like how to sell a haunted house or something. Literally iconic, iconic. Basically, a final girl support group is about this girl who I think gets away from like a serial killer. Obviously, she's like a final girl. And then I think when she's older, she meets other women who have similar experiences where they're also the final girl. And they meet every like Monday or something. And then one Monday, one of them doesn't show up. And so they're like, I'm sorry, like literally, where is Betsy? Betsy? Betsy, oh my god, okay, okay, Tammy, Tammy, call her, call her, call, call her. Is she not picking up? Oh my god, that's so rude, like literally. Actually, you know what, never mind, Tammy, hang up, hang up, hang up the phone, Tammy. I'm gonna try calling her, because maybe she'll answer from me. It's not, it's not shady, it's not, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm literally, not, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying that like sometimes, sometimes you get on her nerves. No, she's still not, no, I, sh I got her answering machine. Soon after this, they begin to realize that somebody knows about their group and is very determined on dismantling it, women by woman. I think most people really enjoyed this. I didn't actually look at that many reviews for it, but from what I heard, from what I know, I think it was popular. I'm excited to read this, if not just a little bit apprehensive, you know? I don't know what to think so far, but we'll see. I also in, October started reading another book that I know I'm not gonna be able to finish and that book is Cows. Whew. This book so far it is giving me greasy, it's giving me grimy, it's giving me musty and crusty. So far it's very vivid in its descriptions of the sort of downtrodden, at least sort of unhygienic. It's serving me unclean realness, you know what I mean? But so far it's about this guy who lives with his mom and he like, he fucking hates her. Like, there is this part of the book where it's so very suddenly vulgar that I literally burst out laughing. So I kind of thought it was funny. It just comes out of fucking nowhere. And like out of nowhere, he calls his mom the C word, like a see you next Tuesday, you know, kind of moment. You know, charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent. And I literally laughed cause it was just, it was so ridiculous. So far he's living with his mom. He hates his mom. Of course he does. <clears throat> and then he starts working at this like, I think meat factory, like butchering place where they kill cows and you know, prepare their meat for consumption. There have been a few things that have just sort of seemed strange to me that are just kind of put in, but not explained. So far though, I am enjoying it. I am planning on reading it in November. I'm gonna finish it in November. I might do a reading vlog for it as well. Yeah. Let me know down below if you would actually be into seeing a reading vlog for cows. I think especially it could be interesting to do another reading vlog of me reading extreme horror. Because, you know, the other one went so well. The next book is one that a subscriber sent to me via my Amazon wish list, and I'm so excited to read it. But I'm talking about Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. Now, unfortunately, um, very sadly, Rachel Kane passed away last year. This, okay, this seems like just the kind of thing that I would fucking love. This seems to me like kind of like hidden identity mixed in with like survival horror. And I, I love that. You know how much I love survival horror. This is about Gina, 
Okay, Gina is a very normal Midwestern wife and mom. She is just living her life, doing her best, okay? Just like the rest of us. And then Gina gets into a car accident. And through this car accident, she and the police uh, come to realize that her husband is a serial killer and has been for quite a while. And so Gina's life, as you can imagine, is turned upside down. One minute she's like, hell yeah, I've got shopping bags and groceries and I clean the house and I don't know, stuff like that, like stereotypes about moms. <laughs> and then the next moment she's literally like, my husband is literally a monster and was killing people this entire fucking time. Probably women, let's be honest. <laughs> Fast forward, her ex-husband is in prison. Good, you know? And she has finally found refuge in this little place on Stillhouse Lake. Her and her kids are finally able to escape the internet trolls and the stalkers and everything like that. She finally finds some inner peace and happiness, thinking that she and her kids can finally start to live a normal life once again. And then... A body is found on the lake. They find a dead body in the lake. And Gina is very rudely awoken from her peace. And Gina begins to question whether she is actually going to be able to find the peace and happiness that she is searching for. I'm so excited to read this. It seems so good. And I've only ever heard the best things. And I know that I say that every single time, but I've literally only ever heard the best things. Last, but certainly, certainly, certainly not least, we have Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z Bright. I recently spoke about this book as well, and one of my very lovely subscribers, Lisa, very kindly sent it to me, so thank you so much. It's literally just like in the background. I was too lazy to go grab it. I talked about this very recently, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but I posted about it on Instagram, and then McKay messaged me, and he was like, I have it on audiobook. Do you wanna buddy read it? And I was like, Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna buddy read it together in November and I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. Apparently, it's supposed to be like queer, gory, extreme, splatterpunk kind of fiction, but apparently it's like really, really good. And I've literally only ever heard people say good stuff, good things about Poppy Z Bright. And so I can't wait. My friends, my family, my familia. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. I'm so happy that we had this time together. I hope you had a wonderful, safe, beautiful, and spooky Halloween. I'm sad that it's over because this month has been really, really good uh, for this channel. And I'm, I'm very thankful for all of you who watch. Thank you so much for subscribing and commenting and just being honestly the nicest fucking people. Like I don't wanna be like sappy and like sentimental and shit, but also at the same time, I'm like kind of like a cancer. So I kind of like, it's like in my nature. I'm just like very emotional and like sensitive. I know I don't look it. I know I look like a bad bitch just all the time, but I do appreciate you. So thank you so much. Don't forget to Hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit. We talk about creepy shit. We talk about the final girl support group and stolen tongues and shit. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next one. Bye. I'm sorry. Lucifer literally could never like, let's be honest. He could never imagine Lucifer ever looking this good. It would never happen. It would literally never happen. Never. It's never gonna happen, Lucifer. Eat your heart out, okay? Like, listen, I am serving you sequined horns. I'm serving you mistress of the dark. I'm serving you gorgeous, beautiful, effortless. <laughs> I'm serving you narcissism. <laughs> uh.